was born and raised in a little town in Utah, St. George, Utah, which is right in the corner of the state, just before you go into the Nevada desert. As a kid, we'd be out hoeing corn out in the field early in the morning, and Dad'd say, oh, there's going to be an atomic bomb test this morning. So the sky would light up, and then we could count. And then you'd feel the ground shake, and you could tell how far out on uh, Jackass Flats the bomb went off. We were really into that. Hey, that's pretty neat, you know? So as a kid, then, we were always kind of aware of the fact that radiation was there. They had a one fallout cloud that came right over the top of St. George from one of the tests called Dirty Harry. Usually they'd shoot the test so that they'd go north, cross the Nevada desert, and then turn east. But they shot one that went right straight east to St. George and it got there quite quickly. And so it had a pretty good fallout cloud right on top of town. So they have a little machine that would go around town and announce basketball games and stuff. And he went around and says, hey, everybody go in the house. We got a fallout cloud. Of course, it's recess and we're only down two. I'm not going to go in the house. But then it, it did spark my interest. So then when I went to the University of Utah to college, I got a bachelor's degree there. And then a guy named Robert Pendleton got money to study fallout from the Nevada test site. This was in the 1960s where they're still actively testing above ground. We shot 103 atomic weapons above ground in Nevada. Each and every one of them put a fallout cloud over Utah. And so <clears throat> for my master's degree, we went and had a whole series of dairy farms set up. Each weekend we'd go and get milk and soil and hay and everything and take it back to University of Utah and count it. And it was on everything. And it was in everything. And it was in the people. We brought the people in and counted them. We counted the milk. <clears throat> I was scared to death. Man, you know, this stuff is everywhere. And everybody was, you know, the news media, everybody was really hyping it up. So anyway, that's kind of how I got started. I got started chasing it through the, through the environment. And uh, <clears throat> my question then, okay, it's everywhere. It's on everything, it's in everything. Is it causing any problems? Are there going to be health effects from this? Are we all going to get cancer? So I decided, well, that's what I want to do. So then I went from University of Utah to Cornell University, <clears throat> where I worked with a guy named Fred Langeman and Cyril Colmore where we actually started studying the effects of radiation. And at that time, and still today, the chromosome was the most sensitive indicator of damage from radiation that we had. So I started studying chromosome aberrations with the idea that I wanted to look back at the fallout. Internally deposited radioactive material, material that gets in your body, strontium-90 in your bones, cerium in your liver, cesium in the whole body. So I did my PhD then on chromosome aberrations produced by radiation. It's not only dangerous, it's costly. Because we could be using the money that they waste on some of these places to a lot better use. Okay. When you're starting cleaning up the environment to way below background levels. You clean up the environments to levels that are below what you get in Denver, Colorado. Come on. Come on. Is that good use of your money? And the, and the public perception is such that uh, you say radiation. If I was exposed, I will get cancer. If I get cancer, it was caused by the radiation. No, no. Most cancers are caused by a lot of other things. Genetic background, smoking lifestyle, all of those things are big hitters. Radiation produces very, very few cancers compared to everything else. But we focus on it because people are frightened by it. Absolutely, and I think that's one of the problems is the public perception of radiation is really messed up. Really messed up. And uh, the public policy associated with radiation is really messed up. To 
all of us work together to make sure that the government understands how important it is to understand low doses, CT scans, waste cleanup, billions of dollars being invested, you know, to do these things. If you don't understand what you're doing, why do it? <laughs>